Arab revolt in Palestine ends. Longest game of cricket ever played lasted 12 days before the game being abandoned. Spanish Civil War comes to an end. The year is 1939, and this was the next to the last year for Lincoln Model K. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that takes the time to cover cars that are not often talked about. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and brands that people may or may not know. We talk history, specs, and design of these rolling works of art. If that sounds like a channel, nay, if that sounds like a community that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1939 Lincoln Model K is currently on display at Canton Classic Auto Museum in Canton, Ohio. This place is absolutely awesome. They have cars that you only read about. Simplex, Baby Grand. They even have a 1904 St. Louis, which they are going to trailer up to the Greenfield Village for the old car show this weekend, September 9th and 10th. I will be there Saturday, September 9th. Hope to see you up there. It's going to be epic. 1939 Lincoln model lineup. You had the Zephyr in the basement, which rode a wheelbase of 125 inches, followed by the Model K, which could be had in two wheelbase configurations, 136 inches and 145 inches. And brand new for 1939 was the Lincoln Continental Originally supposed to be a one-off design for Edsel Ford, which was Henry Ford's only son, but after huge fanfare was put into production immediately, with only two dozen being built in 1939, built mostly by hand. Anyway, back to the Model K. The Model K could be had in two wheelbase offerings, 136 inches, which offered six body styles, or 15 body styles on the 145 inch chassis. The car featured, it's a one-off. It was stretched. It's riding a wheelbase of 160 inches. This car was built for Great Britain's Queen's mother to tour Canada in 1939. Look at how the roof slopes, giving it plenty of space for the Queen's big hat. Lincoln would offer the Model K from 1931 to 1940. So, 1939 is more or less a carryover design that started back in 37, just for giggles, because people are going to be like, oh, they made a Model K back in 1937, 38. I get it all the time. Even though I'm highlighting it right here, they just seem to miss that part for whatever reason. So, 37, 38, 39. Looks like you're looking at a mirror, so we're not going to compare these. We're going to compare 36 on top, 39 on the bottom. Side note, I'm not discounting the awesome design, but these are very similar between those three years, and that's why we're going to compare 36 on top, 39 on the bottom, starting in the front. The first thing that strikes me about these two designs is look at how similar yet different the grills are. Bumpers look slightly different. Biggest change is the front fenders. On the 39, it has lights mounted inside them, much like a Pierce Arrow. The 36 mounted to the side of the grill. Single piece windshield on the 36 versus split windshield on the 39. 36 has more of a formal body, whereas the 39 is more curvy. Moving to the side profile, the fenders are different. 39 looks more flowing. Not to say the 36 looks stodgy. It doesn't. They both look good in their own way. 36 has cabinet doors. 39 has traditional doors. Rear fenders are also different between these two models. These two cars have different trunk profiles. Moving to the rear, split rear glass on the 39 versus single piece on the 36. 36 has a built-in trunk and a trunk rack, whereas the 39 has a trunk. I think the rack was optional. Gas fillers are on the same side. The bottom picture was flipped. Moving inside to take a better look at the dash, 36 has round gauges versus 39 rectangular gauges. The steering wheels look very similar with different center buttons. Which one do you like better in the comment section below? Let's talk specs. As mentioned a little while ago, these are going to be estimates because this was a custom-built car. Estimated 6,000 pounds. Price, 
estimated $7,105, which would be equivalent to you spending $156,254.28 in the year 2023. This car rides a wheelbase of 120 inches, total 1931. Lincoln production was 22,711 units, of which Model K was 133 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer. 414 cubic inch displacement, 67 degree flathead V12, 6.8 liters. It's good for 150 horsepower, 3,800 RPM. An estimate, 215 pound-feet of torque at 1,800 RPM. Bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4.5 inches. Compression is 6, 38 to 1. Features four main bearings built of cast iron. Strongberg two-barrel downdraft carburetor. It is backed with a three-speed manual transmission. Wow, just wow. Just look at everything that is going on with this absolutely gorgeous design. I want to say this right up front. Doesn't this look like Mercedes-Benz to you? Definitely getting that vibe. But look at these headlights. Look at how they're teardrop shaped. But not just the teardrop shaped headlights. Look at the top of the fender. That's almost like an elongated teardrop shape. That is so interesting. And then there's like a, a spine almost. Like a point that runs to the side mount. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Look at this little crease here that comes up to the teardrop shaped headlight. Man, that headlight just in itself, there's so much going on. There's lots of different textures and different design lines and it's not straight, it kind of curves. But look at this whole fascia here and catwalk region as well as side hood molding but it's it protrudes outward it's really cool look at how this grill is designed there's lots of different lines a lot of different elements going on with this design bumpers look at all the textured effects here it almost looks like it's rippled almost like waves This one has accessory lights, aftermarket turn signals, I believe. This one has the Greyhound. Look at how the pad comes down into a point here. Nice center line on the hood. This hood is relatively smooth, but it's not flat. There's lots of different angles going on. Coming to the side mount, look at how it's mounted inside the fender. Also has side view mirrors that say Lincoln in the side view mirror itself. Look at the angle of this windshield. I'm gonna take a step back for a second so you can see it kind of like slopes down in the front and it gets taller as it goes back. The windshield wipers are up on little pedestals. This car does have a cowl vent right there. Two-piece windshield. Look at this little motif up here. That's really cool. This car does have drip rails that run the length of the car. And here's a better look at the roof situation. It's lower in the front, or it appears to be lower in the front than it is in the back. Very interesting. And here's that drip rail coming back. It's nice belt line molding that runs the belt line of the car. Look at how wide these running boards are. I wear a size 12 shoe. There's probably another inch or two, that might be three inches behind my heel in the front. It tapers back inside the body pretty drastically. There's my foot for reference. 
back here and it looks like it's negative four inches. So that's interesting. Here's what the rear fenders look like. The gas filler cap is on the passenger side, right hand side. Look at these lights. Look at that shape and the, that design. Very interesting looking lights. The bumpers in the rear mimic the bumpers in the front. Look at this tailpipe. This one has lights on both sides and the license plate brackets is attached to this light. That's pretty cool. This one has a trunk. And while we're back here, let's get in. The trunk lid is the trunk lid is pretty heavy. Look how absolutely massive that trunk is. You could probably go camping in there if you wanted to. There's there's a ton of space. And the load floor is really the load floor is really low as well. So putting stuff in it wouldn't be very hard at all. These look like they swing out. If you wanted to put an external trunk on, you could. Just look at this fender design. It's not flared. It doesn't have a bead. It is rolled though. Just an absolutely awesome fender design. Here's a better look at what the top looks like from this angle. Getting inside, but before we do, look at how these door handles are designed. The door, the door doesn't feel light. It feels somewhere in the middle. But it opens up a full 90 degrees to allow plenty of access into this car. Look at how the door is all framed out. Here's my fingers for reference. It's got wood in the frame, armrest. Notice it's angled upwards, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, and it operates like this. So look how cool that is. There's only like three or four cranks to the top. Take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, you have hand brake, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Notice the steering wheel shaft goes in between the clutch and the brake pedal. So just take a gander at how far you have to climb to get into the car itself because these running boards are so wide. Oh, wow. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. This car is classy. I don't know how else to really describe it. I absolutely love the steering wheel. It has such a nice quality feel. Underneath the steering wheel, there is room to put my hand between my lap and the steering wheel. And the only reason I show that is because if you don't fit in a car, you can't really buy it. It's not really fun to drive if the steering wheel is in your crotch. On to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right. That top button, I have no idea what that does. That's right above the starter. Right below it is the starter. Gasoline gauge, coolant temperature, amp meter, oil pressure, speedometer with odometer and tripometer. Headlights, there is an on and off switch. I'm not sure if that's for the overdrive. If you know what that one's for, in the comment section below, I apologize. I'm usually able to find a map of what all the button switches and knobs do, but for whatever reason, I couldn't find a downloadable owner's manual for this car. Clock, ashtray, wipers, choke, lighter, throttle control, key, which it has a locking key cylinder, which locks the steering wheel, making it harder for somebody to steal the car. Up above, there are sun visors, and here's my hand for reference. They're, they're on the good side. This is where the rear viewer mirror is. 
and notice it has a mirror and there was a clock in there that's what this circular things for the circular cutout there's also a sun visor over there same thing defrost vents ashtray lighter these are for the wipers on to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. And notice it's a wooden door and it has felt on the door, but just look at how far back this goes. Like that's insane. It goes clear back there. So you would never know that that was in there, but you can, and this, camera does fit and it does and it shuts that's insane you would never know that that big massive camera is behind that door so just check out this door panel notice it doesn't have an armrest window crank for the big window it operates like this And it goes all the way down door handle to get out take a gander at the interior of back here notice there are footrests this one has a rear radio as well as robe rail as well as storage it looks like there might have been jump seats in there at one point but it's a storage cabinet now same thing with this just more storage. There's armrests on the seat themselves back here. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. It's very cozy in this car. This is what visibility looks like out the rear from the back seat. Notice it's a split rear glass. There is a nice parcel shelf there. Creature comfort. So there is a center armrest right there. There is a handle to hold on to on both sides. It's like a pipe handle. It's like rustic. It's pretty cool. Over here, there's a bunch of switches. Not entirely sure what those do. Cigarette lighter here. Ashtray the vent windows do open they open like that but notice how everything's all trimmed out in wood looks really nice there's also lights back there in the corner reading lights there's a nice recessed light up here the seat profile it it does sit rather upright and it does dip down in the back but it's not uncomfortable because there's so much room like i can't even touch the rear of the front seat so far away so just take a look at this gorgeous v12 look at all of the bright work also notice the spark plug wires go inside this tube and then the distributors back up underneath this hat, almost like this looking thing. It just gives the engine a much more tidy appearance. Horn mounted up there. Notice the bars that go in a V shape towards the radiator for structural rigidity. Carburetor right there in the center. The steering, you can see the steering rack right there just check out the profile of the hood as well coming to the other side the fuel pump is on this side better look at the air cleaner situation there's the starter the generators down there too man changing that would be a pain it's got the fan in the front and the radiators in the front of the radiator shell. 
On the positive side, quality, performance, poor man's K available at a much more down to earth prices. Like when I was doing research for this episode, I saw a four door model K for 30 grand. Think about that. It has a V12 in it. So these could be available at affordable prices. CCCA classic status. The camera fits in the glove box. The gauges are epic. Over the hood view. This is a really nice looking Lincoln. Against it, prices likewise to reflect move from four square styling to streamlining. Not handled particularly well when compared to say a Cadillac. Has nothing on a Packard as far as handling. High running costs. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have 1939 Cadillac V12 or 1939 Lincoln V12 or 1939 Packard V12? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, would you rather have a 1939 Lincoln Continental or 1939 Lincoln Model K or 1939 Lincoln Zephyr? Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. That one's a little newer than what we do on this channel. But anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted, and I don't say that for self-worth or anything like that. Just know that your comments do get read. If you'd like to check out our Facebook group, I call it the After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your ride stories, pictures, videos, experiences. Be sure to check that out in the link in the description. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of everything that you guys bring. The comments, the stories, the criticisms. I, I appreciate everything. And until next time, toodaloo!